These individuals today who say that the Bible has been corrupted are not supported by the major figures of tafsir. And I want to begin with one of them who is quite important in the history of Islam. I want to speak about Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas wasn't just anybody. He was one of the Sahaba. He's a Sahabi. He was the cousin of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Ibn Abbas said, the word tahrif signifies to change a thing from its original nature and that there is no man who could corrupt a single word of what proceeded from God so that the Jews and Christians could corrupt only by misrepresenting the meaning of the words of God. In another book, Ibn Abbas' statement is repeated. They corrupt the word means they alter or change its meaning, yet no one is able to change even a single word from any book of God. The meaning is that they interpret the word wrongly. Ibn Kathir recorded the same statement of Ibn Abbas. As for Allah's book, they are still preserved and cannot be changed. What is it that Ibn Abbas tells us? He tells us essentially that by tahrif is meant not the changing of the text, but simply the changing of the meaning. This is the testimony of one who was an eyewitness, the cousin of Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, we must keep in mind that someone like him is esteemed and placed above all other commentators, not only because he was close to the situation, but because of his loyalty as one of the Sahaba. And his tafsir is that the words of Allah cannot be changed, and that there was no tahrif, the lafs, a corruption of the text, but only tafsir bil ma'ni. Furthermore, we have the testimony of an early commentator, Tabari, Ali Tabari, said this about this issue of the alleged corruption of the Bible. Tabari understood this charge to mean simply that the Jews and the Christians did not understand the true meaning of the scriptures that were entrusted to them. And so they oftentimes tended to misrepresent them. Even though Tabari himself wrote against Jews and against Christians, it is remarkable that not once does he himself accuse them of having corrupted the text of the scriptures. Beyond Tabari, when we come to Imam Fakhreddin Razi, we have also from him the testimony that the tahrif that took place was never a tahrif, a corruption of the text. Especially his commentary on Surat al-Baqarah, Ayah 75, he argues, Imam Razi argues that the alteration of the words, in other words, the accusation that there would be a changing of the written text, is impossible, and I quote, is impossible if the speech of God has been made manifest to a large number of people like the manifestation of the Quran. And it is a known fact that the Injil was manifested by Allah to the multitudes. For it was said of that Injil, as it was said of the Torah, that it was guidance, it was light, it was a mercy from Allah for all mankind. So it was manifested to all, and it was to such a multitude of people that it prompts Imam Razi to say that when Allah does act in this way, when he gives something to such a large number of people, it becomes impossible to tamper with the written text itself. Imam al-Razi also says, there is no statement to indicate that they take a particular word out of the book. Let me say something about another important uh, commentator, uh, a figure of tafsir in Islam, Ibn Tamiyyah. Essentially, what he says to us is that the scriptures that were entrusted to the people of the book, Ahlul Kitab, 
these scripture were true copies during the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and they were the true copies that remained even after the time of the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him. And there is no support, he says, in the Quran that all the copies were batil, batil meaning false. That is the tafsir of Ibn Tamiyyah, and we believe that it is a true one. So, in spite of all of these figures of tafsir, in spite of their testimony, where and why do we still have this idea that the Bible has been corrupted? Where did the idea come from? Where do modern Muslims today have this idea? It all came from the writings of Ibn Khazim. It was long after the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, that uh, the writings of Ibn Khazim, uh, who died uh, in the year 1064 of the Christian era, it was because of his writings that this idea was, was uh, perpetuated, this idea was maintained, even though it is not supported. It goes against the grain of history. Therefore, it needs to be abandoned. The distinguished Muslim scholar and professor of Islamic studies at Melbourne University, Dr. Saeed Abdullah, has concluded in this way. The reverence the Quran has shown them at the time should be retained even today. Many interpreters of the Quran, from Tabari to Razi to Ibn Tamiya and even Qutb, appear to be inclined to share this view. The wholesale dismissive attitude held by many Muslims today in the modern period towards the scriptures of Judaism and Christianity do not seem to have the support of either the Quran or the major figures of Tafsir. Today, my friend, even if you hear a word from the ulama, Anyone who purports to be a Muslim scholar, you must weigh what you hear in the light of what has been established and believed in the early part of Islam and commented upon by the early figures of Tafsir, one of whom was no less than Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, peace be upon him, a Sahaba and an eyewitness. Who will stand against an eyewitness of the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him, who can come up with an opinion to say that I have an understanding today that is superior? There isn't, especially when the Quran asserts clearly that the word of Allah cannot be changed.